This is a standard size male king crab. The biologists are taking it to a laboratory to study its predatory habits. The next step is to evaluate the impact of the king crab on marine life. Their claws are long and agile. Their function is not just mechanical. They're extremely sophisticated and they enable the crabs to locate their prey. Underneath its prickly shell, the king crab hides a network of highly sensitive sensors along its legs. They send a stream of information to the brain. Touch sensitive hair is located on the ends of its claws and can detect shells that are buried in the sand. It captures and manipulates its victims with menacing skill. It has small, agile fingers on the side of its mouths. It is covered with tactile hairs that determine the taste and suitability of its prey. If it's okay to eat, the crab moves the food towards its mouth. The crab uses its mandible to crack the shell into pieces and tear the flesh apart before swallowing it. Biologists look at the unedited images. The king crab and the sea anemone is mm. eating aggressively the uh, the uh, medusa here. Yeah, it's amazing, it's and amazing. it's not even uh, affected at all by these uh, sting stings no. sting cells. No, it even takes it right into the mouth. Yeah, and it looks actually find it tasty. Yeah. The young crab has caught a jellyfish and doesn't seem to be affected by its sting. Are really fighting for them as something, uh, yeah. as a treat. That's it seems amazing. like the king crab is winning. He can even, even taking out of the uh, sea animals. Dragging it out of yeah. the mouth, yeah. So it's a really, it's a really aggressive yeah, predator. So it's really competitive in this new uh, habitat. Yes. So they get easily through their defense mechanisms. So yeah, uh, through thousands of years, this, uh, these species have adapted to their environment, but suddenly a new invasive uh, is coming in mm. and they are harmless. They cannot protect themselves for this kind of uh, predation. Lise visits a study center near the city of Tromsø in order to learn more about the king crab's diet. She is attempting to measure the amount of food that each crab consumes on a daily basis in order to estimate the damage that a crab colony can cause in a fjord. Liz distributes prey to the captive crabs. The prey has been counted. This investigation is very important because we need to know what it is eating, uh, what size of prey it is eating, and also how fast it is eating. Because without this, we will not be able to make any calculation about how fast the nature and environment will change in future. So this is a very important experiment. The experiment takes place at night. 
This is the period of maximum activity for the king crab. They are filmed for 12 hours. The crabs start by attacking the starfish. They have soft flesh and are easy to catch. They then start devouring the sea urchins. The crabs easily pierce their armor in spite of their spines. what has happened during the night. So I see that it seems as everybody has been eaten at least one sea urchin and one sea star. And extrapolating this to the nature, uh, we will see that for each king crab per day, they will eat, remove uh, prey or two prey. So that will make a difference if the population of king crab becomes big enough. By eliminating certain prey, such as the starfish, and by sparing the larger prey, such as the bivalves, the king crabs have created an imbalance in the ecosystem and consequently have caused a loss of biodiversity. The king crab does not only use its claws to search for food. It also has remote sensors that allow it to locate prey that is out of sight. These antennas are the equivalent of the nose. They constantly sweep the area in search for prey. They have ultra-sensitive sensors that are able to detect more than 400 different molecular odors. The crab lurks on full alert in the hunting area. It has detected prey using its antennae. It comes across a sea urchin. It cracks the shell open in just a few seconds. The shell gives the crab the calcium it needs to strengthen its own shell. The sudden arrival of this insatiable predator in the hitherto untouched fjords has endangered the entire food chain. It is essential that the scientists discover more about the king crab and the way in which it is colonizing the coasts and the fjords. Jan Sundet, a biologist at the Institute of Marine Research in Norway, is studying their movement. We attached this to the single crab and released the crab in an area, and then we put some buoys to what we call receivers, acoustic receivers, that actually can detect these small uh, tagging uh, signals or, or tag signals from each individual crab. Put it here on, yeah. on the leg, on the crab. So each of these 25 crabs were actually carrying one of these. And the frequency of these tags were so particular that we can identify each crab. So we can say crab number 14 went from there to there, and so on. What the experiment showed, showed us was that the crab moves all the time. It doesn't sit still at any time. It's continuously moving. The king crab is always on the move. It is continually exploring new areas. It surmounts obstacles with ease. The uneven depth of the fjords and the temperature of the water is perfect for the king crab. Some of them settle permanently in the fjords. Their sedentary presence leaves little chance for marine life to regenerate. <laughs> 
Unlike most other crabs that move laterally, the king crab can walk forward at a rapid pace and can travel up to six miles per day. By tracking crabs that have been equipped with tags, scientists discovered that they could move into the deeper fjords, some more than 200 fathoms deep. This is surprising given that the seabed is empty at such depths, at least in appearance. There is an abundance of wildlife in the mud that is produced by the decomposition of surface organisms. The king crabs are aware of these hidden resources. They burrow their long fingers into the sludge and devour everything they find. Tiny organisms inhabit the sedimentary sludge King crabs like to consume them. Since the creatures are small, the crabs need to excavate large areas to consume large amounts. But in the deepest basin, we also have sediment or sand, and inside that, we have a lot of worms bivalves and tiny small crustaceans. So they also have a much higher uh, regeneration time or productivity than uh, if we compare this biomass with the sea stars and sea urchins and big prawns that we find in the Arctic basins. The sludge is at the bottom of the food chain. Worms and other tiny organisms play an important role in the recycling of organic matter and oxygen. If they disappear, the seabed will become sterile and the entire food chain will be weakened. The biologists fear that crabs will reach particularly fragile areas that are home to rare marine organisms and relics of the last ice age. Jan Sundet and his colleagues from the University of Tromsø are on an observation ship. They are situated at the far end of the Porsanga Fjord. It's not yet known if the crabs have reached this area. A camera has been submerged underwater to film the seabed. The water is four degrees and it is 17 meters deep. Suddenly, the camera captures something remarkable. There are so many crabs that the seabed is barely visible. What has caused them to gather together? It looks like it's a group of young crabs. Scientists believe that the young crabs form large and compact groups in order to deter predators. These group formations could also be a phase of socialization. Jan takes a closer look and discovers something else. The group leaves behind countless empty shells. They have shed their external skeletons that have become too small for them during a period of growth. A steroid hormone secretion causes the obsolete shell to crack open. The new shell is still soft. This means that the crabs are extremely vulnerable, and this is perhaps the reason that they shed their shells in groups and form a colony. Fully grown king crabs molt less frequently. This rebirth cycle allows them to regenerate 
and strengthen their shells. The number of predators of the king crabs decreases once they are fully grown, because their shells have become strong enough to protect against attacks. The wolf fish has spectacular canine-like teeth and is called the boot eater by fishermen, but it's not big enough to take on a king crab. The snake-headed fish can measure five feet and weigh 30 pounds. It shares more or less the same prey as the king crab and does not appreciate the new competition on its territory. This king crab has seen its rival and shows its white undershell in an attempt to intimidate it. If the wolf fish attacks the crab, it can rely on its natural armor. The crab's shell withstands its opponent's teeth, even if it loses a leg or two. The wound is immediately covered with a protective membrane that prevents it from bleeding. A stub quickly forms. It will then develop into a new leg. The leg will eventually grow back completely. However, regrowth takes time because the leg develops when the crab sheds its shell. Many of the king crabs are lame, but they still survive. They show extraordinary resilience. This remarkable resistance is also combined with a tremendous capacity for reproduction. Scientists have studied their reproduction habits in depth. They have found that females prefer to mate with large males. The life expectancy of the king crab is 20 to 30 years. They become adults when they are between four and seven years old. Biologists examine the proportion of large males and females of reproductive age in order to predict the growth of a colony. The breeding season begins in spring. It is an essential stage in the life cycle of a king crab. Females emit pheromones that attract males who in turn respond to this mating call. The male takes hold of the female and carries her. Male and female remain closely entwined for two weeks. Neither of them feed until the female is ready to be fertilized. As with other crab species, they store their eggs inside their shells. However, the female king crabs keep their eggs for a long period, approximately a year, to ensure good maturation. 
Immediately after hatching, up to 400,000 larvae disperse throughout the water. Currents carry them for miles on end, and they survive despite the large temperature differences. It is springtime. The larvae take advantage of plankton bloom to feed and start their growth. They move slowly and have to hide from the countless predators that are ready to pounce on them. The surviving larvae begin a series of transformations before they reach their final form. The larvae become small crabs. King Crab appears to be an invincible conqueror. <laughs> 